we'll start to notice here that the very top of each of the tabs beyond this, there's an auto uh, database, user database, and custom uh, uh, radio button here at the top. Um, these are uh, put there because the program can automatically calculate what it, uh, each component as to what it believes is needed for uh, the current um, st state of your file, uh, the current state of your conveyor as you've designed it in the file. Um, so uh, when I click on auto, um, the tab color itself will be a, a nice bluish cayenne color. If I click on user, it You'll notice it updates to be a gray color, letting you know that the user or whoever is using the program has uh, updated uh, this to lock it in and not have the program automatically calculate it and adjust it every time I make a, uh, a change. Um, custom is for uh, if you want to manually input data that's not uh, in the program already, and you can add your own data. Uh, say you open a, a database um, from somewhere else and you you see that the belt data from there is what you want to use you can do that um, so just like um, the materials tab we have at the top a specification which um, has the database we're choosing from if i click the down arrow there it shows that i have one two three four five different database fabric us fabric, fabric iso fabric user steel user and steel fabric user and steel user are user editable databases and then uh, Fabric US and ISO and Steel uh, are databases that are given with the program. We don't allow um, the user to change. So once I select a database, say I want a United States Fabric Belt, um, it, it allows us in the carcass section to see what's in the database um, and make our selections for the belt. Um, the default when it was in auto was a three ply 330 PIW belt. Um, I can uh, look at uh, all of these and say if I click on a two ply 220 belt uh, what does it look like or if I click on a four ply 440 belt I can see what it looks like so I can set up my belt to whatever it is in this case we'll say that the three ply 330 belt was the proper selection when it's selected none of the uh, uh, text values are red meaning that it's um, acceptable and we'll lock it in there uh, you can look at the coverage gauges and make sure those are set up properly. It's all a matter of what you have on your conveyor, if it's uh, in existing or what you think you might need on a conveyor that has um, yet to be designed and you're currently designing it. Um, so you can input those as needed. So for our conveyor, let's say that we're set up for our belt and let's move on to the next tab. I'm going to click on the idlers tab, uh, which should... Uh, in, as with the belt tab, have the auto database, user database, and custom buttons near, near the top, and it works the exact same way. When in auto, the computer, the program itself, is making the selection and educated guess as to what's the minimum required idler for this application as you currently have it set up. If I click on user, um, the tab uh, icon on the left looks gray, uh, meaning that the user has edited this and uh, can lock it in. And um, just to reiterate this point, that if things are left in auto mode, every change I make, the program will automatically try to adjust whatever is left in auto mode. Um, if I make a change while things are left in user mode, um, those components will not change themselves within the program, uh, but will be evaluated whether they, those components works, work well or not. Basically, text will turn red if something's uh, not working correctly or meeting the standards that we have in the program. Uh, so for this case, I'll point out for idlers, at the top we have a specification, which just means the database that we're pulling our information from. We can click the down arrow, we can see that we have multiple databases, SEMA 5th, SEMA 6th, and then some custom databases that we've created. Um, the ones that are labeled user and the custom databases, basically CCE and CACC, are uh, editable. You can edit those and change them. The SEMA 5 and SEMA 6 uh, without the user um, are non-editable and those are just directly taken out of the SEMA 5th edition and SEMA 6th edition books um, as they are. I'm going to click off. As soon as I edit any database it says you should uh, put this back into auto um, to make sure everything's selected properly. I'll let it do that. It recalculates 
Um, I'm going to click back to user, and we can make a selection in our um, description uh, of our idler sets. So if I click the down arrow, uh, we can see what's available to us in the SEMA fifth database. Um, this is just what's the, the, from the table in the SEMA fifth edition book, and you can make a selection. Say, if I have a C6 idler, what, what, is, what does um, this look like on my conveyor? It updates the drawing on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, so you can see what it looks like. Um, but also, you can know that um, it looks like this one's over-designed, so I can actually downgrade it. Um, and let's say for our conveyor, uh, we have a B5 idler set um, for both carry and return, and we'll let, set those up as needed. You can also uh, change the angles here. In, my, in this case, we have the, the, uh, the common angles in the drop-down, uh, 20, 35, and 40. Uh, if I want to make it a 45-degree idler set, I just select it. It updates the drawing. It updates the calculations for me to let me know uh, what's changed. Um, but we're going to stick to our normal 35-degree idler set. If I wanted something outside of the normal, um, you can click on Custom, and you can uh, make these idler sets whatever uh, reasonable angle you like them to be. Um, so that's how you do that. So that's uh, the idler sets. We, we say we'll set up there. We've um, input those in, and let's move on to the next tab. Clicking on Drive, uh, once again, we have an auto.